in this week's episode of the Ryan Rodder Vlogs. I finished a screenplay, motherfuckers! Flying through the sky, hit hey, with done and right. You're never gonna stop us with the brightest light. Think about the times you never fell apart. Well, now we're so alive with the wildest past. Spending every night with my summer breeze. Cool, young and free, pure energy. Playing all the songs that we want to hear. Cast, we could be dead in the morning. What up, vlog? So, just wanted to jump on here real quick. I have finished my screenplay. I finished this process, and uh, you can see the, the weight uh, was getting to some of these. But it's time to take this all down, but first uh, I am going to take the screenplay version. Ooh, there we go. So, so there you have it. This was the outline that I did from the chapter, the beat by beat outline that I would do by hand, which translated into my treatment here, which then translate into the screenplay. So that is the process. Chapter one, two, through 11. Did that exact same process for every single chapter. And I finished that and now it's time to take the screenplay portion of each one, put it all together. And then what I do is I go through the script by hand and make any changes on the paper. I then put those changes into final draft and that then becomes my first draft that I'm going to send out. I plan on finishing that today it's Wednesday, May 6th, week six for the Rhino Rider Vlogs. I haven't even done my intro yet, so how about we do it right now? Yo, if you're not watching the Rhino Rider Vlogs, you are missing out. In this week's episode of the Rhino Rider Vlogs, I finished a screenplay, motherfuckers! Too much? Hey, what's up, everybody? So uh, I've shown you all before, but I uh, just want to go through it again. So this is the process after I finish transferring it. It's the final stage before I officially call it my first draft. So I have each chapter printed out here. Boom, boom. These are all, all the 11 chapters and I'm going through them one by one. And I just, uh, I just do it by hand. That's left over from the previous chapter. To show you okay, so previous chapter. There's 22. There's 22. So I just cross that off. So I'm just keeping it, keeping these things separate until the very end when I combine it all into the final screenplay. But as you can see, I take a blue pen, something other than black, and I literally just read it in my head. And if just something sounds off or there's a mistake, make the change. I didn't think until it was good, it didn't sound right. So I just made that till it sounded more flowy right in here. So you can see Tommy looks to Josh. Now here, reading this, okay. I, we know these characters names, but I'm thinking as a viewer, they haven't heard these kids' names yet. They were just introduced. Um, and so we've seen them before, but we don't know their name. But we've, in the previous chapter, referenced the name Josh as being Morgan's ex-girlfriend. So I realized that these two kids are standing here, Josh and Tommy, but we, the audience doesn't know that it's Josh. And so I just had to add this line in of Josh just to get his attention. Yeah, and then he goes into the line. Um, you can see a little grammar thing, boys dream, okay, just need that, most of this is good. This all looked good to me, this all looked good, not a lot of changes, couple capitalizations, missed a D there, but nothing crazy you guys, and this is because this is because it's all been done and, and worked before, you know what I mean? Like this little stuff, just like, okay, um, oh, 
put that line up there. That's going to make more sense. Yup, instead of yeah. Um, um, already put in, you know, just little, just, this is the, this is just the final coding. This, all this work is, the story has already been told. It's already been written out. It, I know it all flows. I know it works. Now I'm just, you know, doing these minor corrections because I think that's an important part. You don't want to have any gram grammatical errors and you want to read as best you can. And, um, and that's it. And this is my first draft that I send out. And this is what a first draft should look like, okay? Don't let anybody else tell you differently. No, no, no. This is what a first draft should look like, not anything else, okay? Well, my camera battery just died, and so I don't know where it cut off. <laughs> I was talking for 11 minutes. What do I want to say? <sighs> I just believe in every single one of you so fucking much, and I just want you to do what makes you happy. I want you to listen to that voice inside your head, and I don't want you to listen to anybody else, ever. I think the key to life is, is, that, is finding that voice and finding its meaning and its truth, and it takes fucking work. You've got to just look in. I'm having a hard time contemplating. This is the first time I've kind of seen the world like this. It's the first time I've un understood empathy. It's the first time, I mean, I literally, I think my my, my brain has, has changed forms. I, I, I look at the world differently. I view it. I can't stop viewing the world through other people's eyes. And it makes me so fucking sad because the majority of them are miserable. I mean, <laughs> quarantine or not, you know, <laughs> quarantine's... <laughs> Definitely not helping. Uh, I just see people really hurting. I I said it before, but I I used to think that that making movies and filmmaking and writing and telling stories was was it was my passion, and it is. But I'll tell you something else. There's been a new passion that that is neck and neck with that filmmaking thing, and that is just helping people because I can, and not financially anything like that that'll come later but people's mentality is wrong and it's leading them to such sad places i've always wanted to help my entire life anybody who knows me i am drawn to trauma to losing to the gutter to the bottom i feel comfortable there i feel comfortable in the gutter i feel comfortable Surrounding, surrounded by the people who have the least amount. I feel comfortable there. And maybe a part of it is because I know how powerful I am up here and it's not immediately accepted by those around me. I don't know. I just, I like to be not noticed, but I want to be heard the loudest. That is the truth. I feel uncomfortable in public, but I can do this, you know, forever. And if I'm talking about my, if somebody's asking me for my help or my opinion, I'm unstoppable. There's just so many, there's just so many great things that can happen for, I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling now. So I'm going to wrap this, this vlog up. Next week's another week, man. We are week six. We are week six in. My head's at, at the one year mark. See what everything looks like, you know, after 52 of these. So these, these are just, you know, another notch in the belt. I forget what I even recorded or what I'm gonna put into this vlog. I don't think I recorded much, but I'm hope you guys are getting some value out of these. And uh, a few of you have been commenting. I'm still getting, I got another, another new subscriber this week. It means the world. Like when I see that fucking number go up, I get so excited. <laughs> Because it means, you know, that somebody's listening to me. And that is really, truly all I want people to do. I want the entire world to listen to me and hear what I have to say. And then they can go and decide, you know, from there. But I, I need, I want that at bat with every single person, you know, of them just hearing me. So each new subscriber that I get is one more person that I know is going to hear me. And they can, they can take or leave whatever I say, whatever advice. I, I just want them to hear me. I understand that I'm not gonna be able to convert everybody, 
or uh, you know, win everybody over. But if everybody were to give me a shot, a real shot, contextual shot at what I'm saying, I believe they would start to look at things a little bit differently and think about things differently and would lead to more positivity in their life and for them, which then echoes throughout the entire planet, the butterfly effect. If I change one person's perspective on the world in Turkey, and that person in Turkey then begins to spread positivity throughout the world for the rest of their life, think of how many people that's gonna affect down the road. And then of those people, maybe just one of them takes it and starts creating their own positivity to the rest of the world and it affects everybody. It's a fucking chain, right? We're all connected, you guys. We are all connected. I do this, it affects somebody. Like somewhere eventually. It's just all connected. And I just don't know why we're, actually I do know why. People are commenting and saying, those aren't what people are actually thinking. You know, the comments that people reply and post are not what they're actually thinking. It's, 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 it's their fucking self-defense mechanism, you know, protecting themselves from, because they have fear of rejection or ridicule. It all makes perfect sense to me. It all makes perfect sense to me, but that's the reason. That's the reason you're saying dumb shit or telling me to fuck off. Like you are not right, you know, in your head. And I fucking feel really bad for that. And I don't think you're ever gonna get out of it. And that causes me even more sadness. For somebody to know that somebody's gonna live their fucking life not fully themselves makes me really, really sad. I don't know what else to say. Here I am trying to close up the vlog and I get fired up again. Anyway, people, for the record, I have bipolar disorder. I do not take my medication. I don't. My, I have medication. I'll take a tiniest, tiniest half a chew of a Seroquel if I feel myself getting too ramped up or maybe I, I'm not sleeping well. I'm waking up four or five times a night. I'll do that to kind of pull me back in. I'm not saying anti-medication. I'm just saying that for the record, I am being met with a lot of hate <laughs> in regards to the things I say in the bipolar community. And to be honest, I'm not claiming I'm an expert. I still might freak out one day again, end up in the hospital again, strip all my clothes off again, break through a door and, 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 and try and injure someone again. But I might do all that all might happen again. You all might be witness to that someday. If I keep this up for the rest of my life, who knows? I might fucking snap again. Something may happen. That is a, that is a truth of my life. And I think about it every fucking day. But all I can do is just put it on record and see how it turns out in the end. And by the end, I mean death <laughs> for all of us. That's, you know, and when that happens, I'm not gonna care, none of us are gonna care. So just put it on record so it's clear for everyone. I'm not trying to hide anything. This is me representing the CDA. Rider Rider out.